Come on, Rangers! 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 Maidenhead, a large market town in the royal borough of Windsor and Maidenhead, nestled in the county of Berkshire on the southwest bank of the River Thames. There's a lot to say about the town, its roots in Roman history and how it got its name, and there's plenty to tell you about the club, how it came about and where it spent much of its history, how nice the fans are and how much we would like to recommend coming here. Alas, not everybody likes to welcome bunch of amateurs, Least of all, safety officers who were not told that we were coming. The humble safety officer does have to make sure that small plastic cameras are not offering a clear and present danger to the general public, a position that we fully understand. So, with half our cameras removed during the game, combined with an attempt to kick us out of the ground entirely at half time, we are unable to complete an episode on this match. Thus, these interviews with staff and fans, and all of our team talk and match footage will be lost to history, or at least might only appear on Patreon in the summer. We do appreciate that safety is crucial at football matches, and so we hope that nobody at Maidenhead is ever in need of a stretcher. The match itself was an entertaining one. A neat finish early on from Ryan Seeger gave Dorking the lead, but a clean sheet away from home for the first time since the autumn proved elusive as Remy Clarima beat Joe Walster across to make it 1-1, leaving the match in a stalemate by the final whistle. And so we depart Maidenhead and look to the future, which promises a 250 mile midweek trip north to Halifax town. After being in this exact position twice before, only to have the game called off as the coach arrived, it looks like we're finally heading on the road for a midweek game against the second most northernmost team in the league. Get someone to check the map, I don't know if that's true. I'll tell you what, it won't be as chirpy on the way back, will it? It'll be fucking, everyone will be fucking dead on their feet, especially after eating John's fucking food. Yeah, right, Jaffa, anything else you want, Jaffa? Yeah. I'll do a little ploughman for you or something, mate. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Anything you want me to rustle up, mate? Jaffa, if you're not comfortable, give me a shout. Well, I'll come down in a minute and sort you out. <laughs> mate, can we be a little bit less erratic, mate? I'm getting a fucking headache. Well, no, it is. It's fucking like you've got chewing gum on your foot. Just want to just get the team there, not dizzy and relaxed. Right, so I've got to remember our team, then I'll know what's going on. Have you got the numbers of their guys from the dock? It's all on the prep dot. Yeah, it's on the prep dot. I've got it here. So, defensive dead balls. Mm -hmm. What two are you leaving up? I'll put Ryan and Mac up. Just do some dots and just look at how we would, if we go to a 4-5-1, because in a 4-5-1, I'd put Dan left back. Yeah. I'd have Dan left back, Baz right back. I'd have Cook and Ed, centre halves. Right, just do some dots against their three, four, two, one. Right. About how we should, how we should deal with that. Away trips like this, for me, there's a good novelty of being on this coach. It's quite fun, but if you're doing it all the time, like, are they tiresome? What's it like doing a coach journey like this? Uh, no, it's all right. It's, it's not too bad. I mean, look, it's a nice, nice coach we're on, isn't it? So it's all right. Yeah, it's fun. It's good being with the lads, obviously. Um, but I have done it a lot throughout my career so you do get used to it you get into habits of downloading films I think Jim's watching 24 hours in police custody and <laughs> it's a good time for everyone to just come together I, I actually really enjoy the away trips because it's probably the only opportunity where you get to sit with the lads and have just general life conversation so do you, um, how do you boys pass the time usually when you're on a coach like this sleeping <laughs> no a little sleep um, some of the boys are doing a bit of work obviously um, but no, just just mate, a good thing the World Cup's on, so we've got something to watch. Been watching the games, um, Spain coming on at the moment. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's whilst it's new, it's enjoyable. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, we've got the World Cup on the TV today, and um, you're on here, so it makes it a bit more eventful than the normal fucking stresses of um, rushing to a game on a Saturday around the M25. 
I mean, for us, it's new, isn't it? It's a new division. So if you're going to grounds like Halifax, iconic stadiums, then even if it's a shit hole now, um, it's still something to look forward to. Do you know what I mean? Whole day off work as well. Like, are you work understanding? Uh, yeah, they're fine. They're, they're really flexible, to be honest. Um, can be difficult to, to balance it out. So I actually worked this morning mm. and then took half a day holiday and then I'll probably make the hours up Wednesday or tomorrow if I'm uh, not too tired or, or at some point. So as long as you make the hours up and it's, it's not a problem, but it is a balancing act in that sense as well. It would be a tough game, tough game. Um, they're obviously on a good run, um, but look, when you make a journey like this, the one thing you don't want to do is come home with a loss because it's a long, long journey home. So you want to make sure we just don't get beat. <laughs> um, but no, all good. I think like any team, they're going to be really good. Uh, I think every game's a challenge. I think we're finding that out with, with every week that we play a new team, new ground. Um, but I think if we match them for their work rate, defend how we have in the last two games we give ourselves a really good platform and opportunity but yeah expect it to be a hard game like every game is and uh, hopefully we can we can do the business what do you think you have learned since since that first game against Chesterfield uh, do, do you know what it's one of them and it's obviously it's an obvious it's the fact that like I think it's at some sometimes you can be winning the game like we have done and sort of like we can carry on playing our, our style what we do um, but at this level, I think you give you give one little chance away. Um, obviously, they can punish you a lot more. I think some levels we've got away with it, and we've kind of found that sometimes it might be a case where we need to be a bit more together in terms of like keeping our shape and not being more, so expansive, um, just to make sure we get the right results. You've had more head injuries than anyone else that I've known since I've started doing this. <laughs> yeah. Um, how is your head at the moment? It's good, it's all right, it's fine. Again, another thing that I'm used to throughout my career, I think uh, it's position that comes with the nature of being a centre-back. I think, to my disadvantage, I'm probably not as tall as other centre-halves in this league and heading's probably one of my main attributes. I got brought up being told that if you're as good in the air as a centre-half that you've got half a chance of, of having a good career. So, um, yeah, it's part and parcel, but, yeah, thankfully um, it's all cleared up. I think the last one I had was probably the worst one I've had. Um, fractured eye socket so it wasn't wasn't pleasant and then the concussion was really bad after it took me probably five six weeks to feel back to my normal self um, so it's a long one frustrating one but yeah all good now I'm glad to be back in in the fold yeah so it'd be me getting involved in the defensive warm-up and I and Bobby who's on the bench uh, Bobby's a good lad so he'll help he'll help out with that and that's that's the way the lads are it's good to give them some responsibility do you know what I mean we often do that sometimes get subs involved in warm-ups and makes them feel involved and they've got a part to play so yeah Bobby will sort of coordinate all of that really and I'll just stand there moaning at people um, yeah but it's gonna be it's gonna be iconic in it like you know that's that's for us these games are a fucking big deal like if it's Halifax versus Boreham Wood they've played each other the last X amount of years no one gives a fuck but for Dorking and um, coming to Halifax, it's like, what a fixture, you know what I mean? So it's, a, it's another sort of, you know, I'm going to call it glam tie. If you're a club as small as us, here we go. Is that it there? Look, it looks like it. Like a prison over there, is that it? Nah. What we're turning around for? <laughs> Okay, so I didn't have much time to shoot B-roll, so we need to do this really quickly. Halifax, West Yorkshire, where Halifax Town play. FC Halifax Town are technically a club formed in 2008. They replaced Halifax Town AFC, a club formed in 1911, that was dissolved due to financial mismanagement that saw them fall into heavy debt that could not be repaid. For nearly 100 years, a combination of third, fourth and fifth tier football had entertained the people of Halifax and once the club was dissolved, they had to go down to the Northern Premier League. But back-to-back -back promotions, with Jamie Vardy banging in the goals, saw Halifax rise back up to the National League in 2013, where they've mostly been ever since, apart from one season back in the National League North. As it stands, going into the Dorking game, Halifax is smack bang in the middle of the table, just two points outside the playoffs. I did that too fast, we've got loads of B-roll left. Can you undo the lock? Fucking cold, isn't it, man?
I want to tell you something, right, yeah? No one's coming here this year at all and winning. Like, ain't, ain't no one getting shitty. I think I've won the last six straight here. Best home record on the league, yeah? Um, but they statistically create the second lowest chances. I'll check the document. The second lowest chances in the league they create this lot. But they're fucking strong defensively. And I'll tell you what they do. They fucking work hard. If you ain't prepared to work hard, you might as well not mug yourself off and sat on a bus for six hours. Cheers, Moro. Where is he? Oh my fucking <laughs> God, mate. It's like a day trip. It's like a day trip. He's been to the bar. Are you all right, Nicky? You got everything you need? Yeah, yeah. What you got? Up here, mate, be a bothroll, mate. One for Dan as well. Just not for Dan. You all right, Dan, yeah? Everything okay? Jasper, you haven't eaten for a while. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, what did I say, Nicky? Did you hear any of it? No. Okay. They've, I think they've won the last six straight home, best home record on the league. Uh, not many teams are coming here getting anything here. Chesterfield got beat here Saturday. I'm always straight with you, right? So they don't create loads of chances. Um, they're defensively all right, but fuck me do they work hard. If you ain't prepared to work hard, and Saturday there was elements of that in midfield, if you ain't prepared to work hard, you'll come second. So you lot are going to have to be good. I'm telling you tonight. So don't come all this way, go out there, get a bit cold, and then fucking go and have a slow start, right? On the flip side, if you, if you decide to turn up, and I know you probably will, because you're fucking quality, you know, it'd be a great night for us and we'll do our thing and we'll show why we can go anywhere and get a result. Any fucking where, yeah? If 110 goes in, Dan does that, this one does that, guess what we're going to do? Based on that, huh? Go with, because we know we've always got an overload. Go with. Don't let the tens at any point, go and get the ball and turn. Because that's why we're playing with a defensive overload. Because we know that they should not be able to turn. Walshy. They shoot on sight, these boys, okay? One of them scored at Ebbsfeet from fucking 40 yards. Bosh, top corner. Right? They're their best players. Just to be really clear. They're the, these two boys are their best players. Boys on the bench, be fucking ready. Bobby, I want you to do the defensive warm-up for me because you know it and you're good at that stuff, right? And I'll be out there if you need me, okay? But do, do, do what we normally do. I think we'll be great, but we'll have to work hard. And I think we'll work hard as well, okay? We're going out 5-2. I've been supporting Halifax since 2013, I think. The days of Lewis Maynard and Matty Pearson. So I've been going to home and away games all across. So yeah, big Halifax fan, team ticket every year. So I've been supporting Halifax for I can't, 40 years, 50 years. Yeah. yeah. How did you first start? Well, I used to come down, I used to run the gate and uh, went speedway were down here as well and I used to do the gate for the, for the football and also the speedway. It differs really, he always either likes a, a back four or a back five and obviously it's, we're trying to play more of a passing game because when we're just two fit, don't really do all. So. Start this, se this season, a brand new team. So therefore, they've got to, you've got to give them time to gel together to play as a team. They're getting there now. They beat Chesterfield on Saturday, 1-0. Who gave them the chances to, to beat Chesterfield? But we did. Thought we'd be probably mid-table, which is where we're sat at the minute. Obviously, if we keep winning, we, then we can push for playoffs. But obviously, it's a different team this year. Obviously, we lost Pete Wilde, but seem to be picking up the results now. And uh, I think if we keep going, we can push for that six or seven spot in the league. So we'll see, won't we? It's a, it's a club with limited amount of money, but we always build a team. We've had ex-players that have come in for nothing, like Devante Rodney and Billy Waters, and they've and we've somehow turn them into decent league footballers so it, it'll always happen so we'll just see we'll keep going keep supporting and hopefully one day we'll make it back into the league and that the weather in Halifax today is cold so very cold which is why Mark is wearing more layers than a JB Priestley novel unfortunately for us he's buried his microphone under all of them something that will go unnoticed for at least five hours and that's why he sounds like he's underwater for most of this episode. Bobby? Yeah. 
Do you know, you know what you're going to do, yeah? Well, I know what do, do exactly what we normally yeah, do. Done that Good lad, mate. Well done, Bob. He's a senior's missing, he's one of their best players. Um, so that'd be uh, full. Ref! Um, can I say, we've got four fans, they'll have a few thousand. I'm sure you're better than just going on noise, crowd noise. Just ask you the rest of the game as you see it, not on response to the crowd. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy, Daniel. Hold on, that's not underneath layers, that's in his pocket. That's why that was so noisy. He's taken it off and put it in his pocket and forgot to put it on again. Fuck me. Um, this lot have lost a lot of games this season. They've had, a, they've had bad runs. They went to, they beat Solihull, Solihull in the worst form of their lives. Next game, they went somewhere, got beat against someone at the bottom. And their fans are like, they're up and down like a fucking horse draws this lot. So. I think we're totally organised, you don't need a war cry, it's cold enough, you're going to work your bollocks off. Keep the fucking ball. This is not a pitch to false passes, because it is too big. If you start forcing passes tonight, it'll be a long fucking night for you, right? And don't forget, it's not just about fucking first 15, it's about the 70th minute. Let's contain the ball, be neat and fucking tidy. OK, boys? Oh, <laughs> As Mark noted, most of the Dorking fans came up on the coach with the team, and a total of 16 people are making up the away section. With 1,413 fans supporting the home team, they are outnumbered. Hey Siri, what's 1,413 divided by 16? 1,413 divided by 16 is 88.31. 88 to 1. Halifax are employing the 3-4-2-1 system with two number 10s behind the target man. We think that means the overloads are at the back, but Mark will probably correct this at some point. It has been said by Mark that Dorking's players have been overawed by the big stadiums that they visited this season, but with so few fans in attendance, the scale of the Shea Stadium is by no means daunting and the Wanderers get off to an offensive start. side will be well aware of Dorking's vulnerabilities on the counter and they immediately look to spring but particularly with the loan signings Pattenden and Cook Dorking look capable of handling their opponents seem to be on pattern, at least as far as we can tell from the training drills. With Mark's microphone being in his pocket, it's hard for us to figure out what he thinks of the way the game's going. Ah, oh, OK, so he wants Jasper to be playing higher up the pitch. Let's see if we can figure out what he thinks of Barry's trademark channel pass. Town's target man is six foot five inch Emmanuel Dizarui, and he's about to give a masterclass in hold up play that even Harry the Ot Dog would be impressed by. Dizarui's ability to bring players into the game around him allows Halifax to get forwards. When Matthew Warburton gets the better of Joe Cook, Dorking need Ed Harris to come to the rescue. Meanwhile, off the pitch, the steward is getting nosy. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. Oh. What's the one? No, the manager was. That was weird. The opening 20 minutes have been devoid of action, but things heat up a little when Dan Gallagher commits to a challenge that he perhaps didn't need to make. Oh, 
Fucking foul. He may well have gotten the ball, but you just can't do that kind of tackle anymore, Dan. Fucking foul, man. On the other side of the pitch, Jasper is once again looking to play the ball up the line, despite him being the winger that he would have been passing to. Halifax are increasing in confidence, and when Jesse Deborah finds Dizarouwe in the box, it opens up the best chance so far. In the box! And... Joe Walsh saves well, and Warburton fails to find the target on the rebound. Jasper! Jasper! Play back! Well done! Midfielder Kean Spence has yet to show what he can do. A shimmy and a shoulder drop soon change that. Well, work him! Work him! Cookie! Spence carves Dorking open down the middle of the pitch before slipping the ball through to Jamie Cook. He sneaks around his namesake Joe to get into the box and slot the ball past Joe Walsh. Something something loads of time, relax, that's what he said. Dorking are committing players forwards in search of an equaliser and when Kian Spence runs across Joe Cook he trips up and it gets the young defender booked. It's accidental, isn't it? He's just run into him. He's run. He's just run into him. It's not a fucking yellow. From the stroke of half time, the home side throw a corner at striker Disarouwe. He's played more than two minutes as well, by the way. He's played more than fucking two. Tell him. You got the foot, yeah. No, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Come on, son. Yeah. Come on, son. Nicky, got to be better. Got to be, got to be better. You need to get changed. You two, come on. Jasper, you're coming off. Dan, you're coming off because you're on the booking mainly. Joe, yeah. great distribution. Just remember, every time you go long, yeah, that's coming back. No, no, no. Listen, it's a, when you, you the only time you go long is when you have to, yeah. and that's fine. And that's not an issue. Yeah. But if you can put your foot on it, mate, just play, and that's what you've done. When you can put your foot on it, you go to, you go to, um, ideally left or right, or yeah. ideally right. I need to hear you boys a lot more than what I am. This is what you're gonna do, Jimmy. Fuck oh, him, Dave. Jimmy. Yeah. You're going up front. We we'll see ya. Mackie dropping midfield. Mm. Probably you're going right wing. Yeah. Right, here's us. Okay, Joe. When you roll it into Nicky, if it's tight, it gives it your back. Jimmy, you'll yeah. keep running them channels. Yeah. Okay? You'll keep running them channels, understand? Mm -hmm. The whole time. Don't ever look for the ball, Jimmy, in front of their defence. I don't want you to. Okay? I don't want you to. So I want us to play more over drop into Dan's roll. Okay? I think you'd had a good half, actually, Dan. A really good half. You drop in on Dan's roll. Macca and Noel, you just pick up the two man pivot. Right? Games are won mentally, Cookie. Games are won mentally. Games are won by knowing it ain't an issue being 1 0 down. Really simple, okay? We need to get the fucking back out there, million percent, get this game on the front foot. But I'll say one thing it's a really easy game. They counter well, they're countering well. So we gotta make sure all times more the games in front of you. <coughs> yeah? Yep. Cookie tucked in, or Baz. Yeah, but never, not both. Right? Make sure we're there to deal with the counters. I think we'll get joy this half. I feel like we're going to get more joy going down here this half. I really do. I really fucking do. Jimmy, you're so good in high areas. So use your fucking pace and do what you fucking do. Right? Simple as that. Yeah? So we're not going to keep chucking it round corners and long, but we will when it's tight and we can't play. That's what we'll do. All right, boys. Yeah, Dan and Jasper, cheers. Yeah, everyone else, get the fucking ready. Let's get some. Let's get going. Come on. 
We're coming to the end of our sponsorship by fcfootballkit.com. They've been great partners for us and we've really enjoyed bigging up their kits and we've meant it sincerely. So if you're looking for some promotion and you want to give us truckloads of cash, then uh, let us know and we'll say nice things about you too. But it would help if we liked you the way that we like fcfootballkit.com. It makes everyone's life easier. So this invitation is not extended to Curry's PC world, for instance. McShane finds a bit of space for the first time and seeks out Bobby Joe, but Dawkins just aren't moving the ball quickly enough to get in behind. Cook drives forwards, but the ball's not sticking, and that gives Halifax a chance to break. Wanderers are getting plenty of opportunities to throw the ball into the Halifax box, yet they rarely manage to find one of their own. Instead, the ball is cleared over and over and over again. Dawkins' failure to keep the ball in the Halifax final third allows the home side to push back up the pitch and that in turn gives them the chance to try out shots from range. Manuel Dizarue lays the ball into the path of the eye-catching Kean Spence whose stunning drive flies past Joe Walsh, doubling the Halifax lead and dropping the heads of the Dorking players. The positive reaction, sadly, is soon punctured as Halifax go in search of a killer third goal. Players are furious that the referee didn't give this trip on Nile, and usually when a player puts his arms in the air and walks away, he's basically saying, yeah ref, of course I'm guilty. Even though Mark is keen to give Archie a chance to cut his teeth in defence, knowing that Joe Cook can't play against his parent club Chesterfield at the weekend, he needs some extra bite in midfield, hence the introduction of Alfie Egan. Egan, work hard! Nile, talk to Egan! <coughs> Shifting his players within the same formation, Mark is hopeful that the last 20 minutes will bring a change in fortune. <laughs> Giving the ball away so cheaply, however, is more than likely going to bring the same outcome as the rest of the game. Kean Spence is once again at the heart of the move, picking out Tyler Golden, who teases the Dorking defence to its knees before poking the ball into the side of the net. That goal music is really irritating. I've never liked any goal music. I've never even told Mark this, but I can't stand goal music. Especially that fucking song. It's just like... There's just no leadership, there's no intelligence back there. It's not even a good press, isn't it? Like the games we've faced before. Fancy just playing into a press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For two goals. With the game seemingly won, the Halifax fans decide to pick on our TikToks. But the joke's on them, because they just gave us another TikTok. <laughs> Frankly, it's mind-blowing to us that we can travel 300 miles up north and realise that they've watched our stuff. Perhaps propelled on by the injustice of their friend on the sideline with a camera being verbally assaulted by so many youngsters, the Dorking players step up a gear and they decide there's life in them yet.
complete lack of a crowd reaction may be misleading, but we can assure you it's 3-1. Spurred on by Bobby Joe on the left, Dorking finally break down their opponents and Ryan Seeger finishes neatly from close range. <laughs> I'm getting old, but is that really necessary? Chanting stuff like that at the dozen people who spent five hours on a work night coming up to your stadium? It's like a repeat of that Oldham game back in September, as Dorking find themselves dead and buried, only to realise they can dig themselves back up again and be alive again. Me, Jimmy. Or at least they could be resurrected if Jimmy was better at hitting the target from six yards out. A fairly level-headed encounter discovers a touch of acrimony when Luke Moore and Robert Harker get themselves into a tangle. Both players are booked, which doesn't help with the crowd's furious outrage. It goes on like this for a couple of minutes, but it's a fuss over nothing really. In reality, the game is all over. <laughs> fucking challenge me, or all of a sudden. Or we're gonna have a fucking punch up. I'll tell you that now. Don't fucking challenge me, I'm fucking angry. Why the fuck can't you lot take instructions to market? It drives me mad. You can think you're all that. I don't give a fuck. If you're on loan, I couldn't give a fuck. Because I will tell you how it fucking is. And if you don't believe me, you fucking watch it back. Right? Bob, how the fuck, when Jimmy's got the ball there, right, and we're, you know, here, how the fuck can the two have 15 metres of them? Yeah, that's my, that's my responsibility. My, that's my fault, 100%. Right? Yeah. Despite fucking, like, I fucking love you lot, right? But I ain't a fucking mug. You, you lot have to understand how football works. You, I don't give a fuck. If you all talk about going down for this, down like, I couldn't give a fuck. I know how football works. I've forgotten more than most of you fucking know. Right? I told you, in advance, isolate and overload. The reason you had all that ball when you did, was because you isolated the overload. Right? Really easy, really easy. And then, for some reason, you then start dragging people into the overload, making it congested, so all we can see is bodies. Then we get the ball, and we're too deep. Seeger's isolated, right? You have to know how you want to play. Every game, listen to me, every <coughs> fucking game is different. You have to know where the winds are on the pitch. The bottom line is, their work rate and tenacity was better than yours, 100%. But you gave them a chance to hunt in packs. We, I've never seen us get to so many high positions and have no intention of thinking, right, I'm either running at you or I'm putting the ball in the box, right? We fucking turned round, played into fucking trouble, right, just shit. Shit, shit, shit. Really shit. I don't, honestly, you know I don't talk about me ever, but I don't fucking get on a bus when I'm, I'm up at three in the fucking morning raising fucking big money for this club. I don't get on the bus for players that can't fucking track a runner. I don't, I just don't do it. It's not how it works for me. Really simple. I ain't gonna fucking fail, not in a month of Sundays. Won't happen, won't happen. Not on my fucking watch. Instructions have got to be taken better got to be taken better, you know? Simple. But I'll tell you now, boys, you are so, you've got such a soft underbelly. <clears throat> honestly, like, honestly. You know, when you need to fucking solve problems out there together and get together and work out what's going on, I don't think a lot of you've got an idea what to do. That's a big issue on a football pitch, boys. That's a fucking big issue, okay? We are a long way from home. Try not to spend more than half hours picking the bus. We gave them, a, we gave them the ball back for the two second and third. We've given them the ball, and they've just literally countered. 
I drove from the edge of our box. Was it you? I drove and I went to slip it into Maca. And he nicked it. Yeah, he was stretching. Then the two, I think it is, the right back again, drives and runs through the midfield. They both went in for tackle. Dan couldn't tackle because he'd been booked already at that point. Dan's booking was so silly. The bloke's going nowhere. So silly. I thought I thought he had a good game first half, Dan. Yeah, he was good. Then was alright though, holding the ball up, wasn't he? Cool, not many. He was good. You know what he's good at? When he held it up, he did it enough for one of our midfielders. Cut the second goal card. Draw you in and then play something. Draw him in and he played it to his man. He just drilled it. Do you know what I've been in, mate? He's scored eight goals this year. He's just a really good hold up player. Right. Mate, he, he, he fucking was very good at it. But he, get, he kept moaning though in the box. He was like, why ain't they putting it to me in the box? What, because you're marking him? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, 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 no